Hi, this is Dale. We're back to look at the covariance and the coefficient of correlation. I showed you how to use the functions in the previous video, and so now I'm going to show you how you would actually do the, the calculation without using those functions. So the first thing I'm going to do is just copy or cut these and move them out of the way. So I selected them. I'm going to go cut and then paste them down here just to get them out of the way and I'll expand this just a little bit so you can see that a little more clearly and now what I'm going to do is use the chart on the top left column of page 49 so we've got the house which there's 1 through 12, so 1, 2, 3, and I'm just going to click here. If I grab the fill handle down on that lower right, I can just drag it down to 12. And then I'm going to put in X. X would be the same as size. Y is going to be the same as price. And so now I can just copy these, and I'm just doing that to make this example follow what's in the book. And then here I'm going to do some other calculations. So x, y, I'm just going to multiply the values of x and y together. x squared, and again, I'm going to highlight the two, go into this font group, and choose superscript. So you can see that it's x squared. I'm going to copy that over since I've went through that process and so now I'm going to go up here and change that from an X to a Y. The other thing I'm going to do right here is do a little formatting. So I'm going to make it comma style but I'm going to eliminate the double zeros after the decimal point. So here we go. We're going to do some calculations here. So to calculate x, y, just go equal, and I'm going to multiply x by y. e4 times f4. And then I'm going to square x, which I can go equals e4, which is the x value. And then above the 6, hit the shift key, and above the 6, that little caret and then put a 2 in there, that's going to square the value of e4, or in this case, the square the x. And then for y, I'm going to do the same thing. And the other way to do that, rather than use that square, is just go y times y. So again, you've got these three calculations. If I select all three of these, I could go copy and then paste, or it's just a little easier to click and drag the fill handle and now I can go down here to the bottom row and you see that it copied that formula. I'm going to escape to get out of that. Click up there again. You can see that I have squared the x value and again with y did it a little differently. Just multiplied f15 by f15. But it did a great job of doing that. The other thing I want to do is just add in total here. And if I click and drag all the way across row 16 from E to I and hit the auto sum button here, it automatically sums everything above. So again, you can see that. And those values match what you see in that chart on that page. And so now we can go in and do some calculations. But before we do that, I just want to show you the formula. So I'm going to scroll down here, and I copied this out of the PowerPoints. Here is the shortcut formula to calculate the covariance. So let me just drag that up a little bit. So here it is, 
covariance. equal to and now we can do this calculation so what's going to happen is it's going to be 1 divided by and we're going to go n minus 1 in this case n mm, sorry equals <laughs> 1 divided by and it's going to be n is d15 is going to be 12 minus 1 and then we're going to multiply that whole thing by the sum of xy which is going to be this value in g16 so I'm going to click there go g16 minus and then it's going to be the sum of x times the sum of y sum of x right here which is e16 times the sum of y which is f16 divided by n which is that d12 so I'm gonna go open parentheses and go e16 times F16 divided by D15. And in that case, oh, I got a little air in there. And we can see if I go to comma style here and go back and get rid of the decimals that. We've got the 18,927, and that matches the covariance of the sample. So that was successful. And so now we need to calculate the coefficient of correlation. So I'm just going to slide over here and drag a formula in right here. You'll see this formula at the top of page 49 on the second column and it is the calculation for the coefficient of correlation so we just type that in coefficient core And basically what it's taking is the covariance here, because you see the covariance is what's in the numerator, and then divide that by the standard deviation of x and the standard multiply by the standard deviation of y. So in this case, Let me pause for just a second. So we're back from the pause. I think the easiest way to do this is we'll do the standard deviation of x, standard deviation of y, and we'll go equal standard deviation and go x. which goes down to 520 and then for y equals st standard deviation and we select that range of cells right there again I'm going to do the same thing get rid of the decimals and now I can do the calculation for the coefficient of correlation so it's equal to the covariance divided by the standard deviation of x times standard deviation of y. And I'm 
I'll just put those in parentheses to make sure that it does the multiplication. I think with order of operations that would happen anyway, but just to be safe. And then I'll click enter and if I reduce the number of decimal places we get approximately that same answer that you see on the top of the page. It's 0 .7208 there. We have 0 .7212 and I believe that's from rounding errors in the way the calculations were done. If I actually performed it, did it one other way and go equals 18,927 divided by 520 times 50. and then reduce the number we get the 0.728 actually I think there might be a typo in the book oh 50.5 that's my problem I reduced the uh, decimal too far on that but anyway you get the idea it's close enough so you understand what I'm doing with the Excel pardon my uh, excessive focus on the rounding there. It would be uh, close enough if you did it the way I've just done it for uh, full points on that. So hopefully that's helpful.